Hi, this is Scott DeCamp with Unlive.com here with Kyle Austin. We're here at Spartan Stadium after Michigan State's 17-16 loss to number two Ohio State. Um, it was a game that was obviously there for the taking. Um, a few mistakes here and there by Michigan State. You know, a, a gutsy call, you know, when they pulled within one with just under five minutes left, pulled within 17-16, um, have a chance to, you know, tie it or go for two. They go for two, and the pass gets denied. Um, you know, when L.J. Scott had kind of carried them down the field, actually he ran all eight plays. But um, what were your thoughts on that? I mean, do you agree with the decision to go for two? I, I like the decision to go for two. I always feel like, especially if you're the underdog, a, a bigger underdog, if you get a chance to win the game late, you take it. Uh, you don't want to extend the game because to me, how the longer the game goes, that, that's not in your favor. That's in Ohio State's favor. So you get a shot close to the end of the game and take the lead, um, I think you take it. I, I like the, the decision. Uh, the play call, you know, just the way Tyler O'Connor's day has, had gone, his decision making, I, I didn't like putting the ball in his hands to end it. I, I get that everybody expected LJ Scott on that, but, you know, I thought, you know, a jet sweep or, or something, some other type of run um, probably would have been more effective given the conditions and given um, Tyler O'Connor's day because I, I just don't like putting the, putting the game in, in his arm at that point. Yeah, LJ Scott, I mean, he basically carried him. I mean, he <laughs> right. kept him afloat the whole day and. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's easy to say, well, why don't they give the ball to L.J. Scott right. again? You know, no play is drawn up with the idea that mm -hmm. it's going to get stuffed. So, but anyhow, speaking of L.J. Scott, though, you know, he's an Ohio kid, and um, I think we've all been kind of waiting for this kind right. of game from him. He's he's broke the one hundred yard uh, plateau a few times this year, but this was the one where I think he put it all on display. Don't you think? I do, and he, he's the one where I look at it and I say, wow, he looks like he's going to be one of the best backs in the Big Ten. Because, um, I mean, we talk a lot about his Iowa game last year, but that was a game where he came on and finished with a very strong last drive. He didn't he didn't carry them that game. This is the first one where start to finish, it's been the L.J. Scott show for them against a very good defense. So if you're looking for hope for next year, I know there's a lot of uncertainty about quarterback, and we're going to talk about that a lot. But if L.J. Scott can play like he did today um, on any sort of regular basis next year, um, I mean, that's going to be huge for this team. Um, he, he is now what we thought he would be when he got here, which is, a guy that, that can carry an entire offense behind him. Um, he, I thought he was more patient today. You know, he saw the holes when they were there, and he got through them well. Um, great speed in the open field, outrunning a lot of guys on those defenses, and, and really just a guy that looks like they're going to be able to rely on a lot in the next couple of years. Now you mentioned L.J. Scott and hope for the future. Mm -hmm. I think we saw quite a bit of that, you know, in both lines of scrimmage especially. I mean, they've been playing young guys on right. both sides of the ball, but especially in that defensive line, I thought, you know, you got a guy like Matt, Mike Panishuk who really, I thought, stood out in this game. Is there what were your impressions? I guess on the on the youth showing itself today. Well, yeah, I mean, considering they didn't have Malik McDowell, they came in with seven sacks on the year and got three in the first half. Uh, I mean, that was that was my upset um, of the game as far as good things that went for Michigan State. I mean, they threw Dylan Alexander a walk on in there, and he had a, a fumble recovery and a big tackle for loss on third down. So, um, I, I know Ohio State's a little young there, and I thought Michigan State got the better one, but. Uh, to me, the younger guys that you talk about, Mike Panishuk, um, they, they're still freshmen. They play like it sometimes, but at 10 games under their belt, I think we're starting to see the progression there. Um, and this is still going to be a young team next year, but I, I think with a good offseason, guys like that, um, you know, guys like Josh King, who didn't play as much today, but he still had his moments the last couple of weeks, they can kind of start to take a step in the offseason. Um, and, and maybe we can start to see them build it back up again starting next year. One game left, and... Uh... For Michigan State, I guess you could say it's big for their future, but obviously it's a big one for Penn State, right. a big one for Ohio State and Michigan, depending on what happens in that one. I mean, how do you think they finish it out here? You know, I I, I just – to me, this was so much like the Michigan game to them, coming in with a screw touchdown on the dogs and giving a great effort and not quite getting it done at the end. Uh, you look at what they did after the Michigan game. They go and lose at Illinois, which was obviously um, a down game for them. So I – if I'm picking right now, um, I'm probably not picking them to do too well at Penn State. But, you know, they play with this Ohio State team um, like they did. Uh, I mean, they could certainly go there and win. Um, so it, it's, but, you know, they need to finish things. You know, they they played so well at points, but they still had key penalties today that took them back. You know, I look at the, the biggest one after the fake punt, which is a great call, executed great, gets them down to the 37-yard line, potential to score. You get the holding penalty, you get a sack, you move back. I mean, then that's kind of been the story of the season for them. You know, it's step forward, step back, step forward, step back, and they haven't really been able to maintain anything. So it, Penn State's a good enough team, that, like Ohio State. Um, they're going to finish well, and, and if they can't they can avoid those types of mistakes, I think it'll be the same sort of thing. Well, that's Kyle Austin. I'm Scott DeCamp, and there'll be more coverage on MLive.com slash Spartans.